Hello, Popcorn Kit Crew. It's Miss V, and I'm here to read with you. Hey, crew. We have a special dedication, and today's dedication goes to the BG BG Kids. This is a family I've met on YouTube, and they're a wonderful family. Please go visit their channel. You will love them. They're incredible. I hope you guys enjoy this. BG, BG kids, do you like the Little Mermaid? Because that's what we're sharing today. I want you to listen to this story, and I also want you to let me know what you think. Are you ready? No, we're not ready yet, because before we get started, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to say, I am the greatest. Let me hear you say it. Say, I am the greatest. There you go. And you are the greatest. All right, here we go. You ready? Long, long ago, a mer king lived under the sea with his six mermaid daughters who all had long wavy hair and sang sweet heavenly songs. The mermaids loved their watery world, but they liked to hear the wise king tell them stories about the world above the sea. Oh, father, tell us about the cities and the trees and the flowers, they would cry. When you are 21, my little ones, their father would say, you can go onto the surface and see all those wonders for yourself. One by one, the sisters got their chance to visit the surface. At last, it was the turn of the younger sister. The little mermaid swam up through the crystal waters to the ocean surface with great joy in her heart. Close by was a big ship. She could see people on the deck throwing a party for the prince who was on board. The little mermaid couldn't keep her eyes off the handsome prince. As she swam closer for a better look, the sea started to swell and a strong wind whipped up. Oh no! cried the little mermaid. A storm is coming. Suddenly, as the ship was tossed from side to side, the prince was thrown into the churning water. He began to sink beneath the waves and would have drowned had the little mermaid not dived down to rescue him. Swimming close to the land, she gently pushed the unconscious prince onto the beach. His eyes flickered open for a few seconds, and he smiled before closing them again. As she swam away, she glanced back at the shore. A group of people had gathered around the prince. They helped him to his feet and led him away down the beach. The little mermaid dived beneath the waves and swam back home. It's beautiful. The little mermaid longed to see the prince again. She became so sad that eventually she told her sisters about the prince and how she had fallen in love with him. I know where his palace is, said the oldest sister. I'll show you. After that, the little mermaid swam to the surface every day. She gazed at the palace, hoping to catch a glimpse of the prince. Father, could I become human if I wanted to? She asked the king one day. The only way, my little one, said the king gently, 
as if a human falls in love with you. But the little mermaid could not forget the prince. She decided to visit the sea witch. I can make a potion to make you human, hissed the witch, but I will take your beautiful voice as my payment. If you win the true love of the prince, only then will you get your voice back. The little mermaid loved the prince so much that she agreed. She swam to the prince's palace and drank the potion and she fell into a deep sleep. When she woke up, she was lying on the beach dressed in a beautiful dress where her shiny tail had been. She now had a pair of pale human legs. The little mermaid tried to stand, but her new legs wobbled and she stumbled on the sand. As she fell, two strong arms reached out and caught her. The little mermaid looked up. It was the prince. She tried to speak, but her voice had gone and she could only smile at her handsome rescuer. Wow, guys, look at that. The silent, beautiful, and mysterious stranger fascinated the prince. He grew very fond of the little mermaid and spent his afternoons with her around the palace. One day, the prince told the little mermaid that he was getting married to a princess. My parents want me to do this, he sighed sadly, but I love another girl. I don't know who she is, but she once rescued me from the sea. The little mermaid was devastated, but without a voice, how could she tell the prince that she was that girl. A few days before the wedding, the prince asked the little mermaid to take a walk with him along the beach. Once I'm married, I won't be able to spend much time with you, he told her. The little mermaid nodded sadly. She had been dreading this happening. As they walked across the sand, a fierce wind suddenly whipped along the shore. A huge wave crashed over the prince and the little mermaid washing them out to sea. Without thinking, the little mermaid dived beneath the churning waters and grabbed the prince. As the prince lay coughing and spluttering on the sand, he stared at the little mermaid. You're the girl who saved me before, he cried. I remember now. The little mermaid smiled and nodded. I can't marry the princess. I love you, he sighed. I don't care if you can't speak. Will you marry me? The little mermaid had never felt so joyful. As the prince kissed her, something magical happened. She could feel her voice returning, bubbling with excitement. She cried out, yes, I will marry you. The happy couple were married the very next day. The little mermaid's dreams had come true, but she never forgot her family or that she had once been a mermaid. The end. BG, BG kids, did you enjoy that story? I hope you did. Hey, let Miss V know what she thought about it. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was all for you. Well, you know what we do when we come to an end? 
You get a big hug. BG, BG kids, this hug is for you. You go hug your parents, hug your family, tell everybody that you love them. And when you do, you tell them what? Say, you know what? I am the greatest. Miss V loves you. I send you a kiss. I send you peace and love. See you soon.